I am Pinkney and I get a lot of requests, so I've decided to compile them into videos. The first request comes from suck underscore on my underscore lettuce. Very interesting username. Replying to my video about PTSD. They say, please, please do one for characters who are germaphobes. Please, it'll be so appreciated. Well, I appreciate your enthusiasm. So germaphobes are people who have an intense fear of getting in contact with germs. So the first tip I would give you is you need to ask yourself, what does your character do to avoid germs? This can include sanitizing everything they come in contact with, like having the hand sanitizer ready for any event, or just a whole bunch of cleaning products that they take with them everywhere. They could also have things like protective gear, such as like masks or gloves when they interact with people, or to avoid germs, they literally just avoid going places. Tip number two is you need to figure out what caused their germophobia. Typically, people with germophobia have traumatic experiences in childhood that causes it. It could also be hereditary or environmental factors. Like if they were brought up in a household that was super big on cleaning, living in that will make it a habit that they will stick with into adults. Tip number three, what are the treatments for germophobia? A few treatments that you can have your character try to go through is psychotherapy, one specifically being cognitive behavioral therapy, and for medications, Medications that target the anxiety they feel about germs are ones that are used to treat germs. Tip number four, what triggers your character's germophobia? Is it exposure to bodily fluids such as mucus, throw up, um, saliva? Is it unclean services, counters, desks, that sort of thing? Or is it just simply unhygienic people in places known to collect germs such as like hospitals, um, schools maybe? And lastly, tip number five, how does their germophobia impair their life? Are they not able to leave their house because of the fear that they'll come in contact with anything that will cause them to get sick? Is it that they're not as productive at like their job because they have to keep stopping to sanitize everything all the time? Is it that they've isolated themselves from friends and family and the outside world completely? If you have a character who is a germaphobe, most likely the main thing with them is that their germophobia is stopping them from living their life. And so make this a relevant conflict throughout and show the progression of them maybe overcoming it or trying to overcome it and falling back into old habits. Germophobia can also work hand in hand with other mental disorders such as, like I mentioned earlier, anxiety and also OCD. The next request is from JV underscore side underscore stories. They're responding to my cliffhanger video. They say, this really helps a lot. Do you have any tips on a character who lost the ability to read? I'm planning on something for a character, but I don't know how. So being illiterate, like the comments said, it means that your character doesn't know how to read. The first tip I would give for this is how is the world around your character? Do they live in a literate world or do they live in an illiterate world? Meaning that they don't know how to read, but everyone else knows how to read or everyone in their world doesn't know how Tip to read. Tip number two is that you need to decide why is your character illiterate? An example I can give of this is Kevin from Shameless. He is illiterate because he was jumping around from foster home to foster home and never got a chance to catch up in school. The question is, is your character in a similar situation to him? Do they have to drop out of school in order to help their family out and never got a chance for academics? Has your character had to hop around from school to school all their life and not had a chance to settle down and really learn things? It's good to add this to the backstory for your character. Tip number three is that you need to figure out how does your character function without being able to read or write? Does your character have another character or characters helping them with things? Does your character have a tutor or do they spend time attempting to read books to try to teach themselves how to read? And if you're writing an illiterate world, then you probably don't have to worry about this. There's probably a way that the entire society gets around writing and reading. Maybe they use pictures instead. Maybe they all type in Morse code. It's up to you. Just come up with something unique so that your readers believe that this character has gone on as long as they have not being able to read or write. And tip number four, how illiterate is your character? Can they not read at all? Like are they completely illiterate, not being able to read or write anything? Is it big words that give them struggle? Is it just pronunciation or is it just spelling? I think this can also go with making your character more unique if they struggle with specific things and not just everything. One thing before we move to the next one, if you wanna be featured in a video, comment down your request below or you can click on one of my socials in the description and comment on one of the videos there. Or you can join my Discord and I will respond to you directly and before everybody else.
you'll be special. All right, the last request is from Roblox underscore Royal High Player. They're also responding to my PTSD video. They say, could you make one on how to write first person? Of course I can make one on how to write first person. Here it is right first now. First person point of view is when you're writing your story from the perspective of a character in the story. Instead of you being the narrator, which would be third person, one of the people who are actually experiencing the things in your story are the narrator. Tip number one is to keep their voice consistent. The way they speak can be based on location. For example, if they're British, then they're probably going to use British slang and British terms from whichever area of Britain you decide to write in. Or if they're a Southern North American, then they're probably gonna talk with like a Southern drawl, maybe say y'all a lot. Or you could have them adopt specific terms from specific states. If your story is based in like a fictional place, then you could just have the character have a few phrases or words that they use often and that become their voice. Or maybe something as simple as your character talks in a few words each sentence or your character is really expressive and dramatic about how they talk. This can also give a little insight on your character's backstory because the way they talk will be influenced by their job, their lifestyle, the people they live around, things like Tip that. Tip number two, when writing in first person point of view, use active voice. Active voice is when a sentence's verb is enacted by its noun. For example, you wouldn't say, we were driven by our teacher. You would say, our teacher drove us. Number three, stay in character. This is not the same as tip number one, where I said to keep their voice consistent. What I'm talking about here is that you need to keep using I pronouns. Keep talking as if you're that character. It's very easy to get in the mode of writing and because you're writing it, accidentally use third person point of view pronouns. We are talking about I, me, myself. Even though you're not talking about yourself, you're talking about your character self, but you are your character right now. So stay in character. Tip number four, show not tell. When it comes to writing a first person point of view, it feels like your character is telling a story to someone. And in a way they are, they're telling a story to the reader. However, when you're describing their senses, you're not gonna say it as if they were telling a story. For example, your character would not say, I saw a cat walking down the road. They would instead say, a cat walked down the road. Because even though they are telling a story to your readers, your readers still need to feel immersed in the fiction. And by saying, I saw, you are separating your reader from the story. You are reminding them that they are reading a book when they are not supposed to know that they're reading a book. They are supposed to think that this is happening. They're supposed to be in the world. They're supposed to be feeling the feelings of the character, thinking their thoughts, having these emotions, experiencing these experiences. So to keep the immersion of your story, just describe what they see. Don't say that they see it. Just describe that they see. Tip number five, your main character does not have to narrate your story. As long as it's a character who is relevant to the plot, enough for their perspective to matter to the story and they are semi close to the main character because i mean it's the main character they're the one getting the most page time so whoever is narrating needs to show that character a lot as long as you have those two things you can make whoever you want narrate the story tip number six don't start every sentence with i i know i told you and tip like what was it tip three that you're supposed to use i pronouns but that does not mean that you have to say it every single sentence first of all this gets repetitive and boring and also annoying to your readers after a while i would also say this is another instance of show not tell again you would not say i felt dizzy you would say the room was spinning, something along those lines. Sorry if I'm just like regurgitating points, but this needed to be said. I don't want y'all out here making these rookie mistakes. I appreciate you for sticking around. Once again, if you want your request featured in a video, feel free to comment down below. I would also love to talk to y'all about what y'all thought about the points and even feel free to add on to what I said down below as well. Teach me something. Anyways, toodles.